This is CPE-133. This is experiment 5. And this is the an introduction to Verilog test benches, which is a way to simulate your circuit, which is a way to verify that your circuit is working properly, other than visually testing it. Additionally, this is going to give us a little bit more practice with Verilog uh, behavioral models and structural models as well. So what we're going to do here uh, in this experiment is work with comparators. Not a, not a complicated circuit. Um, we're also going to get a lot more practice with behavioral modeling and we'll see test benches for the first time. So what we're going to do here is take a two four bit comparators and make that into an eight bit comparator. Now it's super not a big deal to make an eight bit comparator, but it, using two four bit comparators gives us a bunch of extra practice. So we're both going to test this visually on the uh, which is turning the board on and we're also going to test it in the simulator which means we're going to generate a test bench for it. So comparators, uh, standard circuit and digital design, super well-known XOR circuit. Uh, you should read about it in the book. Uh, essentially it's you know, a complicated circuit to design with gates but it's actually a trivial circuit to design with uh, a behavioral modeling. So this is a quick example of a two-bit comparator with only one output and the outputs equal. So this is a brute force design method. These are, uh, there's four inputs here. These are all the possible inputs right here and these are the outputs. And you can see that I'm asserting EQ when when uh, both A and B are equal. You can see that in these in these four cases here. Here are the other two cases. So you've probably seen this from the book. So I can generate uh, you know, product of some products equations and grind these down and when I grind these down it ends up looking like this. Now these these are XNOR gates, the outputs of these XNOR gates are anded together. So what it's saying is that XNOR gate is an equivalence gate. It's saying when these two bits are equivalent um, it's going to put an, a 1 on the output of the XNOR gate. So what we're doing here is is comparing equivalent bit locations and anding them together and that's going to tell if it's, if it's equal. So this is a classic circuit. If we wanted to make it into a three-bit comparator, the equations would be horrible, but uh, it's simply a mo matter of adding an extra XNOR gate here. So this is a, another uh, application of iterative, iterative modular design. So this is a, a generic model for a, an 8-bit comparator with three outputs, and the outputs are uh, EQ, uh, less than greater than so it's equal less than greater than so as you can see super trivial compared to the equations we saw before not a big deal and that's why we like Verilog so much so this is our comparator is a foundation module comparators have data inputs they have no status inputs I'm sorry they have no control inputs and then they have three status inputs three status outputs they do not have any data output so essentially what this is doing is comparing these two numbers and giving a, a an output status on these numbers. So here's an example. What we're going to do is make a 12-bit comparator by instantiating an 8-bit and a 4-bit comparator using the, the generic uh, comparator module. And so here we go. So this is our generic comparator module. This is our our black box diagram, which we're going to do first. And these are how we're going to map it. So it's really very simple to do as in this approach. Of course, it would have been simple just to to declare an, a uh, a 12-bit comparator from the get-go. But uh, just to say that, that we can do it with an 8-bit and a 4-bit is good because, as you can see here, we uh, what I'm why I did this was to show that we have these these bus indicators here or bundle indicators as inputs to to the comparator. So this is an 8-bit comparator here. It defaults to 8-bit because the parameter is 8. Uh, this is a 4-bit comparator which I override. I override the, the parameter with that little declaration right there in the instantiation and I've mapped it correctly. So these this is 8 bits and this is 4 bits. The output of those two signals I am anding together and that gives me the final output for the circuit. So this is a really a good valid approach to this experiment. Uh, you're going to have to do some other stuff. It's not the experiment's not quite as easy as this. 
So this is experiment five. Once again, this is what we're looking for, uh, our final circuit, but we're going to build it out of two of these. And you, you'll you see that uh, what you're going to have is two sets of these equations right here that you're going to have to write a module to generate the final three outputs here of the of the 8-bit comparator. So this is the trick is generating this extra module here. No big deal to generate to to generate two of these, but then you have to deal with these extra like two sets of these values right here and do the right thing. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, generally speaking, uh, anytime I work with anyone on this, they do it different than everyone else and different than the way I do it too. So this is modular design. We're getting closer to modular design. Keep essentially uh, keep. Uh, a better design is not one giant module that does everything. It's uh, many modules working together. Uh, anytime you have one module that does everything, it's it's bound to have problems. So don't do that. Uh, essentially, this is um, what you want to do is keep the functionality in these modules separately. So this relates back to experiment four when we had a decoder, which had a, D, a BCD to seven segment decoder where we had the BCD inputs as well as switch inputs and they were essentially we could have put them all in the same block but they're separate functions so we put them in separate blocks and you should always do that and the big issue here is generally simplicity in Verilog uh, essentially the more complicated your circuits get the uh, more complicated your models get the more freedom the synthesizer has to mess up your models so anyway, what we want to do is keep it simple, and simple circuits are easier to, bug, to debug as well. Uh, the last thing here is just the notion of Verilog uh, test benches. You know, uh, this digital design is one thing, but half the battle, probably more than half the battle, is verifying your design work. Now, granted, in this class, we verify most things with just visually, but we got to use test benches and we'll use those extensively in one and 233 and if you don't learn it here you're going to be not in good condition in 233 I'm not going to go extensively description of these in this module is actually described quite well the Verilog free range Verilog foundation modeling textbook with examples and all that stuff there's also a cheat sheet you should take a look at as well so um, I always use the cheat sheet I don't have this memorized and so I, I expect you to do the same so the idea here is this is your circuit that you design and this is what you're going to design to test it. So this is essentially the test bench is send it some signals and then instantiate your design. And once you uh, get this test bench written, um, call someone over to ask to show you the or uh, ask someone if, or if we're still online about the, uh, the the kind of the cool simple features of the simulator. There's there's not that many of them, but they're, you need to see it for the first time. Uh, so yeah, so just keep in mind, this is your test bench here. It has no inputs and outputs. You're sending it stimulus over to your design. Uh, typically, you can write test benches that send status back, but we're actually not going to do this for this experiment. So test benches can become very, very complicated. Uh, as in you need to test something a test a giant circuit you aren't able to test every single transistor in that circuit so you have to select what you test very carefully and they get really complicated and they uh, kind of the test benches start looking like software which is okay because you know these test benches are not synthesizable so the idea here is we kept it really simple in this class and there's you know a couple examples coming up essentially we just yeah, I'm not going to go over this real closely. We we write a block. This is your stimulus driver here. We write a block, and this is your instantiation. We write this initial block, and we just uh, provide inputs uh, to our circuit, and then we look at the outputs. The, the, the simulator is going to generate the outputs. And that's all I'm going to do in this one. Just notice this is an instantiation of this module right here. So anyway... That's it for this.